It all started when I left for Spain on July, uh, I think it was the 7th. Had to fly from uh, Nice to Paris and Paris to Barcelona. Barcelona take the train down to a small town uh, called Benicarlo. Let's have a look. just got here today this morning and uh, started uh, looking at the sails and taking things out a bit I'll show you around and uh, realizing the uh, <laughs> the huge un undertaking I'm, I'm getting into um, I restored the two boats before and unfortunately now I know what I'm getting into <laughs> that doesn't make it easier uh, but hey, you know, I don't want to discourage anyone from restoring old boats. I, I, I think it's uh, it's an awesome uh, adventure and uh, I'm going to do it again. And uh, my uh, concern today, though, I mean, this week, of course, is to be on my way to uh, back to Antibes from uh, Benicarlo in Spain. And that's, you know, following the coast is about 800 kilometers and, and it's a long way. And I do have to be back uh, to work on the 20th of July, and today is the uh, what is the 8th, and the boat will be back in the, uh, in the water uh, on the 10th. So, 10 days for 800 kilometers. Uh, that's 80 kilometers a day. That's a lot. Uh, so, uh, for a small boat like that, um, I mean, you know, if the wind is good and everything, it's I could do it in much less time. But uh, who knows? I don't know. Uh, so. <laughs> We'll see how that goes. Birds had a field day on this boat and of course I'm gonna have to uh, pressure wash it. Uh, <laughs> this is not uh, very nice but hey one thing at a time. And also down here this is not real wood you can see uh, it's this type of material and I don't like that because of course you don't see what's under it and when water gets uh, under and something bad happens uh, you just don't know. So uh, this will probably have to go, <laughs> but uh, not today. I'm also not a big fan of these types of finishes uh, where you have uh, some uh, plastic uh, covering glued, you know, uh, sticking. Um, this is not real wood, same kind of material. Everything is in shambles, of course. I'm just moving everything out of the boat and it will need a lot of aesthetic, you know, cosmetic work for sure. Uh, painting, sanding and varnishing and all that stuff, uh, that will be a lot. So six sails, two mains, three jibs, one spinnaker. Oh, and this is my uh, survival suit. And as I thought, a second main. I wonder which one is bigger. I think this one might be a little smaller and this one might be uh, the bigger one yeah I think that's bigger so two mains awesome one for good weather and one for not so good and I got a thinner jib here next to the big one well apparently I have a spinnaker <laughs> second coat uh, they got it right <laughs> Well, that ought to give you a good laugh. Yeah, <laughs> it looks pretty goofy, but uh, I'll tell you, I had my fill of sun uh, 22 years in Florida. I think I had my uh, lifetime dose of uh, radiation from the sun. So uh, everything is going well. No wind, really, I mean, a little bit of headwind. So uh, I'm running on the engine and it's, it's running good. I uh, haven't really covered as much ground as I hoped. Uh, to today I only have 10 days uh, to make the trip so 
and day one is not uh, won't be the longest uh, that's for sure <laughs> oh well tomorrow is another day end of day one <laughs> and i'm all red i look like a uh, a drunkard with my red nose <laughs> Well, it was uh, it was very uh, tiring. Uh, solo sailing is it's really tiring. It's not easy. Uh, it's very physical, and you think it's just being sitting, you know, at the helm and just waiting. What you know, it is that, but you do have to go back and forth and do things and tend to the sails and a lot of stuff and. You bang yourself everywhere. I'm sure I'm full of bruises, and I do remember that. I, um, and I guess it's you know I have to uh, yet to get my sea legs. <laughs> so I uh, I'm stopped here at uh, I think it's uh, the uh, nautical club of uh, hospital or something like that. Uh, I'm not even sure where I am, but I'm uh, I'm actually uh, in a marina. So uh, I uh, I leave. I'll try to leave early tomorrow morning. I was going to try to make some radio contacts, but uh, it's already like almost eleven. It's just just too late. But man, just quite an adventure, quite an adventure. And I have nine days left. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna go. I'm gonna be exhausted, but uh, it's also uh, it's also exhilarating uh, to bring that boat back to home. You know, and uh, after losing my my sailboat uh, Dagny in the Bahamas, I've mentioned this before. I think uh, it took me three years to be able to watch uh, YouTube videos on sailing again, and another year to uh, plan on buying another boat, and then I got it, and then <laughs> this present situation hit. You know, and I couldn't get it back from Spain because I couldn't go to Spain. And now I've got it, and uh, it's it's really hard. But uh, once I have it home, and once I can set it up the way I want, uh, it's going to be awesome. And it's already an awesome boat. Uh, really good behavior. Uh, it doesn't do anything funny. <laughs> it doesn't surprise you, uh, and it sails pretty down well. So uh, pretty uh, pretty happy about that. Now I'm going to go to bed, and uh, well, I'll keep on filming tomorrow it's very hard to film on a boat i have to uh you know and uh, of course running a uh, sailing channel it's that's going to be very different from a uh, radio prepping channel <laughs> nothing to do with it because it's more it's more life you know uh, a radio channel you uh, it's all technical and uh, but a sailing channel it's 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 the human side uh, mostly uh, there is some you know technical stuff uh, there are a lot of things but it's not the same and uh, i have to get used to film that but that's another story almost the end of the day guys uh, i have to install cameras on the uh, on the boat uh, that'll be much easier but uh, here's my destination and uh, actually i don't know <laughs> how this town is called but I'm almost there. There is a nautical club there. I hope to find a diesel and maybe a meal, maybe a shower, that'd be nice. Big ships around here. They come fast. Hi guys, second day. Uh, not going as well as I hoped. Uh, I was on my way and uh, noticed a low voltage uh, message on the GPS. Uh, the thing is, I think the uh, water pump for the motor is run by electricity so it's an electric pump and uh, the motor started uh, overheating and so I had to shut it down uh, I had to shut down my everything uh, I had to shut down cut off the batteries so I have a little power maybe later to start the engine when I get somewhere but uh, it's sail only from now on and I'm doing about four knots so it should be about 14 15 hours uh, to Barcelona which should put me there at one in the morning. So I might just keep on going past uh, Barcelona and go further, uh, find a little tiny place somewhere. Or I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do, but I need a motor to enter a port. So I'll find someone to tow me in. Um, but right now I gotta put some miles under my keel and uh, that's all that matters. So I'll, I'll take care of it a bit later. I have to say though, it's pretty quiet. <laughs> 
I like it without the, the engine, that's for sure. It's real nice. Maybe I'll do some fishing. Not gonna play chicken with this one, that's for sure. It's working again. I don't know what happened, but I restarted the engine. Uh, temperature is stable. No idea. Morning of the third day. There is absolutely no wind today, so that's a bummer. I'm gonna have to use the engine the whole time. I decided that uh, I was not going to spare you guys uh, from anything regarding boat life, so uh, I'll let you guess uh, what this uh, cut-off bottle is for. <laughs> I feel like I've been hit by a truck last night. <laughs> it's just uh, it's just difficult, uh, very physical, but uh, hey, it's time to go. I'm hoping to uh, get close, if not past the... Uh, the border, uh, the French, uh, Spanish, French border today, that would be nice. We are in uh, Balise, uh, uh, so uh, it's kind of, and it's not that close from the border, but uh, if I do a good run, I don't know, the weather doesn't seem to be that great, and uh, I don't think there is any wind, that's the problem. Not an ounce of wind today, so it's gonna be uh, motoring the whole time. Well, no, maybe not the whole time, but this morning at least, I'm sure. Ah. Alright, it's already 10.30 today, uh, we are the, uh, the 14th of July, so <laughs> it's Bastille Day. Uh, I think I'm going to go direct to uh, Toulon, so cross, straight across, and uh, that should take about 30 hours. And it's going to be very hard because of the lack of sleep, of course. Uh, now, I do have an autopilot, but uh, given that uh, my batteries are on you know, alternator, are not behaving uh, very well uh, but I think there is enough juice for the uh, well at least for the navigation lights <laughs> then we'll see if the uh, autopilot the uh, Raymarine uh, will uh, do his job I mean not pump too much current uh, we'll see about that uh, I have to get some diesel and uh, get everything ready I get my survival suit in the back and uh, just go and I better hurry up because uh, otherwise it's gonna be a bit late Dolphins, a <laughs> bunch of them. They jumped around the boat, incredible. Very dark tonight. This is all I can see, the compass. Uh, I'm using my uh, little flashlight and I'm watching the compass and I'm uh, just driving the boat uh, at the helm. And that's all I can see and it's so black. So just keeping an eye on the compass, oh, zero, six, zero. And that's it, six hours to go, I should, uh, I should start to see the sun at about 6 a.m. So uh, right now it's 11 p.m. so it's going to be a long, long night. Alors là, nous avons Marco F4 TXR qui est venu pour le voyage. <rire> Et devant, euh, ah, vous n'allez pas le voir là, qui est en train de changer le foc. Sainte-Maxime. Sainte-Maxime, on va prendre tout un hébergement à Sainte-Maxime, donc on va arriver en pleine nuit puisque on va arriver encore ça pour préciser en route. And of course, I forgot to, <laughs> to film the arrival. But I made it back. And of course, uh, this is the boat. <laughs> It's safe and sound and so am I. Conditions were uh, quite horrendous during my uh, crossing of the, the uh, Gulf of the Lion, uh, Golfe du Lion. I had four, six, seven. Uh, the, the first day was fine, you know, 
near uh, relatively calm and not much wind actually i would have wished there was more but then uh, maybe i wished a little too hard and i got four six seven uh for uh the next uh, you know the night and the day and the following night and that's really rough and there was big waves and twice i was thrown i was sitting like this in the cockpit my hand on the tiller and i was projected uh, into the stanchions on the other side the boat went sideways and the sails were almost uh, touched the water twice so I reduced sail and uh, I uh, continued like that on a, uh, a small main sail and uh, I was 40 hours at the helm and it was a constant battle uh, physical and, and 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 you know mental battle to uh, to 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 do that for 40 hours on and without any kind of you know uh, not much of a break you know my autopilot worked for a few hours but uh, that's the uh, the only thing otherwise uh, the conditions were too rough for it and it would just lose its mind and you know the boat would just go lose its heading and that was bad <laughs> so I uh, turned it off and I I finished the trip myself and uh, I hope I don't have to do that again, but hey, you know, it, it, you never know. First order of business was to replace the batteries, and my friend Marco here did that. Uh, he's a pro. Uh, merci, Marco. So that the next weekend I could go to the uh, island of Sainte Marguerite. Uh.